let's face it there are many people that don't enjoy catching bream on the feeder it's certainly something that I love to do on a wide range of venues as with every method within fishing there are certain techniques hints and tips that can certainly put more fish in your net so if that's something you're interested in then this might be the video for you this is what I consider to be my bream fishing essentials As you all know, bream can be caught on a wide variety of venues. Here in the UK we've obviously got loads of commercial waters, but we've also got canals, rivers and natural lakes that all hold bream. They're a very, very important species to learn how to catch, especially if you're a match angler. And this video just kind of outlines a lot of the bits of kit that I use to try and put more fish in my net. When you're looking at the kit that you actually require to catch bream, it's very important to look at the venue that you're going to be attending. As you can imagine, there are so many different variations in venue, uh, and the biggest thing I can possibly say to you is the first thing you need to do is check the rules. The rules are in force for a reason. Whatever that reason is, whether it's in the interest of looking after the fish or it's just the um, idealistics of the club or controlling body that run that water, they obviously need to be adhered to. And in the rules that will also probably give you a hint as regards what kind of kit you can use and what you can't use. One of those key rules is the use of mono and the use of braid and also the most important one is the type of rig that you can use as well and that also includes barbed and barbless hooks. But always make it a really really important part of your research when you're checking out a new venue is to check the rules first. Once you've identified what kind of venue it is you're going to be fishing, that should obviously lead you into looking at the type of kit that you can use or select to use on that certain venue. Some venues you might not be casting very far for these fish, you know, it might be a wide um, open expanse of water in front of you, but if the fish are quite close, then obviously you might be looking at shorter rods like a 10 or an 11 foot rod. But on other venues you might find that you've got to cast at range, you know, on some um, open expanse waters that we fish, you're having to fish with longer rods that are 13 foot, maybe even 14 foot long because you're having to fish at, at range to catch the fish. So always research the venue that you're going to go and fish and just dig out on the internet where you can look at old match results, um, just get an idea and a feel for what kind of fish are being caught and what ranges they're being caught at and obviously if it's got um, a website for the fishery then it's quite easy to just go onto any of the search engines, type in the name of the fishery and if it has got a website the chances are it's going to lead you straight to that website and that can save you a lot of time hassle and effort just to narrow all your options down right at the outset so once you've identified what kind of a venue it is you're going to be fishing that will inevitably give you some kind of an idea as regards the depths um, and the ranges that you could be fishing so if you're only fishing at short range i get asked a lot about matching reels to rods as regards the actual distance that you're fishing and the fish that you're targeting now for me up to ranges of about 35 meters i find an 11 foot rod is perfect don't just select any 11 foot rod though. A lot of the time, especially here in the UK, certainly if it's a natural venue, you might find that you're fishing with um, lighter lines and smaller hooks, and that will mean that you'll need to use a softer rod. Now, obviously there are loads and loads of 11 foot rods out there, and there are all the actions of them are different. So just do a little bit of research. If you're gonna go out and buy an 11 foot rod that is specific for bream fishing, then just you know bear that in mind because there are, certainly in the UK now there are a lot of 11 foot rods that are designed um, and specifically used for um, targeting carp. You don't really want rods that are designed for carp. If you can get a nice soft rod that's going to allow you to get more um, variety out of the rod because if it's nice and soft then you can use that in winter when you're fishing with lighter lines and lighter hooks but you're also going to be able to use it in the summer as well so let's face it to get a decent rod these days you know they're not really really cheap so by doing that selecting a rod just take your time select a nice 11 foot rod and that way you'll be able to use it all year round now an 11 foot rod i find is matched perfectly with a 4000 size reel that balance is just right in my opinion and that's what I've used for throughout all the years of my fishing. When you are selecting a reel just have a look at the ratio and size of the reel. Some people prefer more compact 4000 size reels. When I'm talking about 4000 that's all to do with the gear ratio not the physical size of it but some 4000 reels are bigger than others. So just if you are going to go out and buy one of these reels 
um, just go out and have a look at it first don't just buy it off the internet because I've seen so many people buy what they thought was a nice compact reel and when it's arrived it's too big um, so just make sure you get that right because that's going to make the balance of it when it's actually on your rod a lot more enjoyable and it'll help you play fish better as well another key aspect about selecting a reel is make sure it's got a really really good reliable line clip there are so many good reels out there and I've had reels in the past that worked fine they were perfect they were very durable um, I never had any problems with them but the line clips really let them down and I finished up not using them purely for that reason when we're bream fishing it's very very important to be accurate just like in most of our feeder fishing that you need to be accurate and obviously you can only enhance and, and be as accurate as you probably possibly can by using a line clip so just check out the line clip first if you're not sure just go on the internet type it in about that reel and the chances are you're going to see some kind of a review about that reel and more often than not it gives you some sort of a mention if there are any flaws with that reel for me a 4000 reel on an 11 foot rod is perfect but then when I'm fishing past 35 meters sometimes if the conditions allow you might be able to go a little bit further past that with an 11 foot rod again it depends on the action of the rod but generally when i get past 40 meters 45 meters i prefer to use a 12 foot rod for me that is just a nice versatile sort of rod for that sort of range but a, a good 12 foot rod like the ones i use will allow you to go up to 60 meters as well so if you have got to go a little bit further out or if the conditions deteriorate like they can do on a lot of of the bream waters that we know because a lot of them are open expanses of water and that means they're open to the elements and the wind and that can quickly change so by having a rod that's going to allow you to go a little bit further then it just means that you don't have to have another rod set up should you want to go five or ten meters past your feed on a 12 foot rod for me a 5000 reel is balanced perfectly once again make sure the line clip is you know reliable and durable as well because they do get some hammer but just check all these things first you know for me the reels that i use are perfect i haven't had any trouble with them uh, and the line clips are perfect they've never let me down now once i start going past 60 meters i'll openly admit that there aren't many occasions here in the uk now where we actually actually fish past that range for bream there are some venues but most of them it's very very rare that we have to go past 60 meters but if i do need to do that or if the conditions are really really rough then i can step that up to a 13 foot rod a 13 foot rod for me is obviously designed for casting at range and again like i've said before on the previous two rods make sure the action is right for you there are some exceptionally good um, distance casting or 13 foot rods out there but just have a look at the action first some are softer than others some have got quite a tippy action and just have a think about what it is you're actually going to be trying to achieve with that rod if the venue that you fish for example is a massive open expanse of water where conditions can be severe then you might want a rod that's got a little bit more poke to it something that's got a, a little bit of a tippier action because that's going to allow you to punch heavier feeders at the kind of range that you expect to be fishing but on the flip side of that, some venues aren't open to the elements, but you still have to cast, you know, 60, 70 meters. Say if you're casting up to a far bank, for example, but the venue might be surrounded by trees. Now in that scenario, you might not need a rod that's gonna be quite as tippy as that. So there are some rods that have got a, a more through action that are gonna give a softer playing action for when you actually hook fish, but they're still gonna allow you to get to that range. The ideal reel for me on a 13 foot rod is a 5,000 500 reel so again the reel has been stepped up to coincide with the length of the rod if you know the conditions are really severe and i feel as though i'm struggling to get where i need to go or i just want to make the job a lot easier then i can also step that up to a 6000 reel there aren't too many 6000 match style reels out there the one i use is the horizon but you can see by the width of the spool and the line light that that will make hitting that sort of range much much easier so because sometimes even if you've got a rod that can just about get you there you might purely especially if you're pleasure fishing you might just want to step it up to a bigger rod and a bigger reel just to make the job a lot easier and a lot more enjoyable the next thing to take into consideration is the line now when i say a line admittedly a lot of the time we're fishing on commercials and we're fishing with monos for me i love to use the cart master but that is just it's a mono that i like to use when braid isn't allowed more often than not if braid is allowed on the venue then i will always opt for braid when i'm fishing for bream 
The reason why I like that is because it obviously enhances bites because there's obviously no stretch there as well. So even when you're fishing at you know medium to long range, you're still gonna be able to see the bites all right. Because braid is strong, but a lower diameter, that means that casting is a lot easier because it's a lower diameter and that will cut through the wind and come off your reel a lot quicker and obviously go through the runners of your rod as well. So that's gonna make casting much, much easier. The other advantage of using braid is because it's a lower diameter as well, on some of these large bream venues that we fish, they are inevitably affected by tow. Tow is just the effect of the water moving when the wind starts blowing. That will affect your tip. When you're sat waiting for bites, depending on the diameter of the line or braid that you're using, that tow can actually bend your tip and that will affect your presentation. The only time I'll fish for bream with mono totally exclusively is if I'm fishing short. So if I'm fishing up to about 20 to 25 meters, I like to use mono when I'm fishing for bream. The reason for that is because, as you can imagine, when you've only got 20 meters of line out and you will hook a proper bream, you know, three, four, five pound bream, obviously there's, you know, you're only 20 meters away from that fish. And if you're fishing that with braid, it can be a little bit too direct in my opinion. You know, so when you're hooking big fish like that at short range or relatively short range, I like to use mono just because there's a little bit of stretch there and that will hopefully prevent any hook pulls. Hook choice is very, very important when you're bream fishing. How many times have you heard people say that they pulled out of a bream or lost one and then they've lost the rest of the shawl or it spooked fish out of the peg and they've not had another bite? This is one of the reasons why you know getting the, uh, a hook that you're confident in, one that's sharp and reliable, is very, very important. And as we all know, when we're bream fishing, sometimes you might be sat there, you know, up to half an hour for a bite. So when you do get a bite, you want to be supremely confident that when you hook it, that you're going to land it. For me, I like a finer wire hook for fish up to about two pound. In my case, it's the Super Match, which I love using for fish up to like say two pounds skimmers um, and then over that if I'm fishing with slightly bigger baits like worm then the SW is a perfect hook for that it's slightly thicker gauge and it's got a flattened bend on it which means that you know if you do hook any really big fish then you know you, you know you can be supremely confident that it's going to keep the hook hold and you're not going to lose that fish as always as you can expect feeders are very very important as regards catching bream it's very important to select a feeder to do the job that you're actually wanting it to do a lot of people just pick a feeder up and don't really think about what it's actually doing under the water obviously the key issue that was taught to me a long long time ago is you need a feeder on that's going to get you to where the fish are there's no point in having a really nice pretty fancy nicely presented feeder in your swim if you're presenting it in a place where there just quite simply aren't any bream Get a feeder on that's going to get you out there, whatever weight that might be. And then after that, just think about the presentation, about how it's sitting on the bottom and how it's actually emptying. There are loads of different types of feeders out there and everyone's designed for specific reasons. You know, they're very, very uh, well-designed feeders now on the market. They've all been designed by the consultants and the designers and the anglers that work for the company that developed them. And they've all been developed for a reason. So just have a look at the shape of your feeder, the style of the feeder, and just have a look how that's actually working once it's in the water. Tip choice is very, very important for a couple of reasons. One is, like I say, I've already mentioned the toe. You want a tip on that's obviously soft enough to register bites, but you don't want one that's too soft that it's gonna be bent right round because you know there's so much toe on the venue that it's just pulling the tip right round. Um, so just think about your tip selection. Going back to the rod selection as well, that is also tied in with the tips as well in the sense that always have a look at the rod rings that are actually on the rod that you're gonna select. If, for example, the venue that you fish, you're only fishing with mono, without shot leaders, then it's not too much of an issue. Most rods can do that, no problem. But if you're gonna be fishing with braid, or if you're gonna be fishing anywhere where you might be using shot leaders, then just have a look at the rings on the rod that you're looking at. Because if you're fishing a, a leader, or you're fishing with braid and a leader, you've also got some sort of a knot on there as well. And that knot is gonna be running through those rings or those guides on the rod at high speed when you cast in. The last thing you want to be doing is selecting a rod for braid fishing for example or one where you're using shock leaders where you've selected one with the eyes or the guides are too small, too fine and that's going to cause crack offs. I've seen it happen in the past and I still see it happen today. So if you're going to be using shock leaders select a rod that's got really nice big guides. This one might seem a bit of an obvious one but just have a nice little selection of bombs with you. 
I like to do this because if you're going to be fishing in winter or on a venue that's quite hard you might only really be fishing in one spot for the full duration of the session okay one of the things you need to make sure that if you're going to do that is you want to make sure that whatever range you decide to clip up at that there aren't any snags there that the bottom's all right that there aren't any problems there by putting a nice bomb on if you're fishing like a mid-range say i don't know 40 to 50 meters then a 30 gram bomb is perfect in my opinion what that will allow you to do if you fish with braid it'll allow you to whack the bomb out to whatever range you want to be fishing it, that will obviously wet your braid and just clean your braid on the first cast because sometimes let's face it you end up with ground weight and all sorts on your braid and what that will allow you to do is once that bomb is cast out just watch for how quick that tip's going to bounce back when the tip hits the bottom of the lake bed or the river or whatever venue it is you're fishing just have a look how quick that tip actually springs back when the bomb hits the bottom that will tell you that the bottom is quite soft if it springs back really really sharply then that will suggest that the bomb has landed on a hard surface now whatever you do with that information is entirely up to you if you're quite happy fishing on a soft bottom for bream that's fine if like me you prefer to fish on a harder bottom then that will tell you that you're on a hard bottom but it will also tell you by dragging the bomb back as well really really slowly across the bottom it will tell you if there are any snags there any weed there and just if there are any obstacles that you might want to stay away from one of the extra key bits of detail which I think is very important in my bream fishing and the venues that I fish is a long landing net handle. Now I carry one that's five and a half meters long and I'm sure for a lot of the venues that you fish that might be a little bit excessive but by having that with me I can obviously use that at four meters, I can use it at three meters if need be but it means I've got that extra long landing net handle. The reason why I always have that set up certainly in big competitions is because maybe you've done the same I've seen so many fish lost just before the landing net. I've seen so many people just try to reach out to net a bream and the hook's pulled out and they just haven't had a handle that's quite long enough to scoop that fish up as soon as it's come to the surface. For me when that happens if that comes up hopefully within four or five meters of the bank I know I can quickly scoop that fish up before there's any chance of a hook pull. And the final bit of essential kit that I always use in my bream fishing is a stopwatch. It doesn't have to be a, a specific Argos bought stopwatch like this one that I bought for a few pound online. It could be a wristwatch, it could be a phone. The essential bit, key detail to this is that you're just timing your casts. You've got to start the session or the match with some sort of benchmark starting plan of how long you're going to spend on each cast. Let's face it, some of the bream matches and certainly a lot of the bream matches that I fish you've got quite a bit of time on your hands because you might be waiting an hour, two hours, three hours for the fish to even turn up and they can be very very sociable matches because you can easily be chatting to anglers either side whilst you're waiting for bites. That can be such a, an eye opener when you look at how long you've actually been out there on a cast. When you're not timing it it's easy to lose track of time and you can easily lose your way in a match and you'll be amazed how many times you actually spot patterns of how long it takes to get a bite. Well if you've enjoyed this little insight into what I consider to be my bream fishing essentials hopefully you've picked up one or two little tips or hints or maybe it's just been a thought provoking video about the way that we look at our kit and the way that we select the tackle that we use for each individual venue. If you've enjoyed this video please give it a thumbs up and a share and if you've done any of these tricks before or if these are new ones to you then please Give us a comment below and I'm sure we can all feed off each other's experience. Thanks for watching and I'll see you all in the next video.